Hey, YouTubers, it's Francis here. It's about 8.30 p.m. on March 7th. Um, I just want to share some things that happened today. Okay. Um, Damn, one minute goes by. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, sorry, I'm in slow motion here. Anyways, um, I was up early this morning, and like I shared with some of my friends at the bar, today was like Christmas. Okay. You know, when you when Christmas comes along when you're a kid and you're anticipating all these presents that you're going to get and you wonder what they are and you have no idea so sometimes you can't even sleep well the night before Christmas like Christmas Eve right everybody can relate to that right well, last night was kind of like that for me, okay? I mean, I, yeah, I went to bed, I listened to the radio show, and, um, I was going to go see me on the cardiologist, okay? So, I mean, so I was up early, I sh shaved, showered, washed my hair, put on my makeup. And uh, so I left here, and I took the 8 o'clock bus, early bus. My appointment wasn't, like, until 1.30 this afternoon, okay? So, you know, Francis is chomping at the bit, okay? I've waited for almost a year, okay, um, all this time. And I went through all the therapy, psychological therapy. I went through all this, jumped through all the hoops. Okay? And uh, so today was the day. I, a month ago, they took all this blood out of my freaking arm. They run all the blood tests. And you don't, you have to wait a month to find out what the hell is going on, right? So, anyways, today was like Christmas, okay? So, so, anyways, I took a bus halfway downtown. I went to a, a wonderful place to eat for breakfast. I went to the Cool Moose Cafe. It's on the corner of Park and King Street in Jacksonville, Florida. And they have wonderful breakfasts there. All kinds of omelets, uh, homemade muffins. Their coffee is like uh, the best in Jacksonville, okay? I mean, I had Southern Pecan and some uh, Mountain Blueberry. And they got a big pot of, like, the regular roast. So, you know, you kind of like a little, little chooch of this, a little chooch of that. Fill it up, boom, boom. Put a little cream in there. Add a little sugar. Oh, the coffee is so good. And I don't normally cream. I'm dairy-free and sugar-free. But, you know, every once in a while, I like to have a little cream and sugar in my coffee. And, oh, God, it was so good. And I was tempted to have, like, um, the meat omelet, you know, with sausage and ham and all that. But I, you know, it was hard to struggle. But I'm trying to stay on my diet, so I mean, I, I got the garden brie omelet, and it's got spinach and tomatoes and onions and whatever and some cheese okay no pork products no 
pork, nothing, okay? And I got some red potatoes and, you know, so when I have an omelet, okay, I move everything to one side and then in one corner of the plate, tomato ketchup, right? Then I shake up and put a little hot sauce on it and a little salt, pepper, mix it with the fork. And it makes like a kind of like my special sauce. And, you know, I don't go out and eat omelets and potatoes or hash browns every day. So, like, this was a real treat. In fact, it's been a month or two since I had a breakfast like this, okay? So, it was so good. So, I sat there, and for half an hour, I just savored every bite. I had white toast and wood butter, and I don't normally eat any of this stuff. I mean... I'm normally eating, like, veggies and rice and all this other crap at home. <laughs> Nobody would ever eat like me, okay? You know? I don't care. All I see all you girls, you're eating salads, and you go out to restaurants and have burgers and fries. Not to say I don't do that, like, once in a while, but it's not, like, my daily thing. Okay. So, you know, I lost, like, weight in a month, okay? And so I got on a scale at the doctor's office, and uh, it took me three hours to get there. And anyways, that's another story. So I get there a little bit before 11. My appointment is at 1.30, okay? This is an air-conditioned office. So I got there about 11 o'clock. Nobody is in the waiting room, okay? And then, so I pull, I find some magazine that's interesting with me, uh, Health Web or some bullshit like that. So I start watching this. I start looking in this magazine. I figured, hey, you know what? I sit on my ass and, like, chooch on... Facebook and YouTube all day long. So, hey, so what? If I have to sit in the doctor's office for two hours, at least I made it here before my appointment, right? So, I goes in there and the secretary, the receptionist is in there and says, hi, who are you? And he says, yeah, this is, uh, you know, Francis Mag McGinnis, okay? Oh, oh, okay. And I says, I know I'm here early, but it took me three hours to get here on the buses and and whatever. If the doctor can see me early, great, you know. So I goes, I, I says, I need to use the restroom because it took me three hours to get there, right? So I mean, so I goes and I pee in the toilet, you know, I mean, and I figured I was going to have to wait for like two and a half hours till 1.30, right? So I get some magazine, I sit in a chair, I'm watching the magazine. Some other patient comes in and sits down and was a guy. And so anyways, uh, after about 10 minutes, like um, the, the person that weighs you and takes your blood pressure, he, he comes out and he says, uh, hey, Hugh. That's my first name, legally, okay. I says, oh, okay. Um, yeah, hey, what's up? So he says, okay, it's time for you to come in, right? So I said, oh, okay. So you know, I go in, I get weighed. And I, and I actually weighed one pound more than I did like five weeks ago. Bullshit. What the fuck? I mean, are they like fucking up the weight scale? I mean, I lost 10 pounds on my scale. I mean, what the hell's going on here? So, I mean, I had this on, you know, I mean, I got a nice light skirt. It looks blue, but it's actually like aqua. And my shoes. So, you know, I'm like, damn. So it's like I'm registering 10 pounds heavier on their scale than on my scale. So I'm like, well, which scale do you believe, you know? So anyways, you know, so much for the doctor's office. Maybe they ramp it up 10 pounds just to, like, make you think, like, you're fatter than you're supposed to be. <laughs> 
woo, it goes through your mind, right? Like, man, you're you're a patient in trouble here. You're you're ten pounds heavier than you suppose you think you are, right? So, anyways, anyways, this this uh, male nurse or whatever he says to me he says, listen, um, just tell the doctor that you said that like. You said to come in early, like at 11. I says, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm cool with that, okay. You know what I mean? They're taking me like two and a half hours early. <laughs> and there's nobody in the waiting room, so you know what? Eh. Francis is like, okay, go with the flow, okay. <laughs> I've been waiting for five weeks. I took the blood test four week four weeks ago, so like, what the hell, you know? I mean, why should I wait two more hours, right? So, anyways, I go into the thing. They check my blood pressure, which actually was lower than it was a month ago. And um, so, anyway, so the doctor comes in. And he didn't say anything about like I was supposed to have a 1.30 appointment instead of 11 o'clock appointment. So I was like, I was all prepared to say, yeah, yeah, you said if I could get in early just to come on in. So I was all prepared to say that, you know. And I'm like, <clears throat> you know, Francis is, I'm so truthful. It's like I can't tell a lie, you know. <laughs> but he never asked. So I says, oh, well, thank God for that, you know. So anyway, so anyways, the main thing of this whole appointment was, yeah, hey, my blood sugar was 150, which is higher than 120, and he wants to put me on this metformin shit to reduce my blood sugar. I'm like, fuck that, I ain't gonna take that shit. That that's the shit that caused me to get this fucking pacemaker and heart failure like five years ago. I'm going to take some medication that fucking like almost killed me, right? Eh. Anyways, he doesn't know that yet, but he prescribed it. It's at the pharmacy waiting for me, right? So anyways, we looked at my uh, hormone levels, okay? Now, for all you girls out there, you have a pituitary gland up in your brain, right? And your pituitary gland emits like LH and FSH. And these go down to your gonads, okay? So anyways, apparently my pituitary gland is like putting out three times the maximum of the normal range of like LH and FSH. And I'm like, what the fuck? I mean... That doesn't sound normal to me. You know, and then my testosterone was like a little over 500, and it's like the normal band's like, I don't know, 500 to 1100. So, like, here my brain's putting out three times the amount, the maximum amount it's supposed to to send signals to my gonads to like produce testosterone and sperm and you know what I'm just like making a minimum and then apparently my they checked my estrogen and it's like 44 and I don't really know what that means but I know that normal women have like maybe couple hundred to six hundred or something, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, I'm not normal woman, I ain't got any damn ovaries, okay, I mean, you know, it doesn't make any sense, but a normal male would have like, you know, five, maybe ten, not forty-four, so I'm looking at it like, well, geez, I got three or four times the amount of estrogen in my system that I'm supposed to, so like, so you know what and this is all baseline data because I ain't never taken any HRT so it's like 
Francis's hormones have been all screwed up his whole life, okay? You know, and it kind of explains some things to me, okay? So I don't give a shit what any of you people think. I got the test results, and they're documented, okay? So, you know what? Yeah, Francis ain't a normal male person, okay? So if you thought that I had any kind of normality about sex drive, uh, sexuality, or anything like that, eh, you just got proved wrong because, you know, the binary bullshit male-female doesn't work for me, okay? And you know what the doctor told me? He says, you know what, he doesn't even want to put me on estrogen. You know what? Because it my um, because of my blood sugar and my heart failure, he said that I'm at risk for like these blood clot bullshit. So like, okay, I says I already know that. I says I've been researching this for like a year, and I know all of this stuff. I says, look, can you just put me on the minimum dose of estrogen? You know says, well, I think we're going to wait a month. So, so basically what he said was he's going to ramp up my uh, alactone, which is like this anti-androgen stuff. And that's supposed to like drop your testosterone, testosterone down in the ditch. And, you know, my brain's chooching out the max. Or like three times like the maximum normal range to produce all this stuff because maybe there's a feedback mechanism in our brain that like says, well, geez, my testosterone ain't as high as it's supposed to. So like there's a feedback loop and like so my brain is like producing all this maximum LH and FSH. But it ain't like chooching because guess what? I got hypogonadism. My testes are all fucked up since childhood, okay? So anyways, um, and the fact that I, I don't even have ovaries or feminine bullshit. And my estrogen's 44 instead of like 5 or 10. And so why is that? Okay, so... You know, Francis's hormones have been screwed up for, since he was, like, all his life, okay, for 50 years, okay, so. And if you can't, like, accept that, sorry. You know. So, so after I got all these results and, and, you know, I got prescriptions, and, you know, I got the stuff in the cabinet over there. So starting tomorrow, I'm taking what the doctor told me to take. Plus, I have prescriptions to go get. And, I, and you know what? He didn't prescribe me any kind of estrogen because he said, that, like, I may not even have to take estrogen. Okay. And then he said, if I have my testes removed, um, that there wouldn't be any testosterone there to speak about. So, so that's, that's the situation I'm in, folks. You know, I'm in like limbo. I'm like, geez, 19 minutes. Oh, my God. So, like, it's like sort of like I never was, like, had the hormones for a normal male. Or a normal female. I'm like in like limbo. Okay. So, you know, I have to go with what my brain thinks. Okay. And, you know, I want, I want the feminizing hormones. Okay. And I will wait. I don't care how long it takes. But, you know, so we're basically going to like, increase my testosterone blocker medication and see how that works 
Because the doctor's concerned because he's afraid that, like, if he gives me this estradiol shit, it goes through your liver. But it also has a risk for, like, producing blood clots. Oh, and also, he checked my um, potassium is, like, 4.1. So he said that my potassium is okay. So that's why girls... You need to have your blood test taken before, you know, you just can't just start taking hormones. And, you know, even though I'm not normal, you just can't just start doing that without the blood tests. Blood tests are important. And if you get anything out of this message in, geez, 21 minutes, realize you have to go in and have your blood tested because, you know what, you don't know what you're Everybody isn't the same. You're an individual, okay? And nobody is like alpha male or omega female. You know what I mean? Where there's like a spectrum, and you need to be checked out before you start like assuming that you need like so much estrogen. So you know what? Guess what? Francis has boobs, okay, yeah, I have boobs, I have little boobs, and some of it's probably fat, or man boobs, and I don't, I don't negate that, okay, I mean, I'm an intelligent person, I consider all the possibilities, okay, but I'm also very intelligent. And, I, and this is why I made this video. I want to tell all you girls out there that want to transition, you need to go in and have your blood tested because you don't know where you're at. And I didn't know where I was at either. And yes, hey, I had surgeries as a boy and, and I had my testicles lowered and my testicles probably were never normal. But you know what? You don't know. You're different from me, okay? And you're different from everybody else. And psychologically, you're different, okay? So, you know, you need to go in and have your blood tested before you start risking your life taking, like, hormones. I mean, so, I, I mean, I was disappointed. I really was disappointed. I wanted, I, I even told the doctor, I said, look. What's the risk? You put me on the minimum amount of estrogen, okay, but he said no. And you know what I said? Well, doctor, you're the doctor, and I have to, like, punt, and I have to kind of, like, trust you that you're going to do the best for me, okay? And as much as I would have wanted to start taking estrogen, I decided that I'm going to play it safe, you know. We're going to ramp up this medication that I've already been taking for five years. We're just going to like, you know, go from 25 milligrams a day to 100 milligrams a day and see what happens. And after a month, you know, that should have, have change me to a different equilibrium and we're going to see how the testosterone and estrogen changes and then he's going to change the prescription so you know what patience that's what it's all about girls you know you know you have to go in have your blood tested you you know regardless of what you want you have to like do it according to the doctor Okay, because if you don't, you're taking big risks that are maybe unnecessary. The doctor said that I may not even have to take any estrogen. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm laughing my ass off because you know what? I'm not like a normal person, okay? Think about it. You know, Francis has got boobs, he's got, you know, I'm taking these supplements and stuff, and you know what? Mm. 
I may not even have to take estrogen. They just have to kind of block the testosterone, and then like things will nature will take its course, you know. So, anyways, I just want to encourage everybody, and the reason I made this video tonight. And I know I went out and had a few drinks and, you know, a couple pitches of beer and a few Bloody Marys. And I was, like, chooching at the bar for, like, mm, five or six hours, having a good time. I deserve it, okay? I deserve it. Because, you know what? I shared some things with my best, my good friend, Sean, the bartender. You know, there, was a, there was a couple girls in there that I knew from before I shared that. And you know what? Everybody was very supportive and, and happy for me. And I told them that the thing that makes me the happiest I said, all these years I didn't know why I was different. But now I do. And it's like you're sad because you weren't normal. But then there's joy because I know who I am. And that's what's really important, isn't it? Love you all. Gotta go.